Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronic Specifier at uh, European Microwave Week. I'm on the stand of Knowles Precision Devices with Tim Browner. Um, Tim, first of all, could you just give us a, a kind of update on Knowles? I know there's been a lot of activity in the last 12 months. Maybe you could just update us on that. Sure, Mick. The, uh, you know, Knowles is really continues down the path of expanding our product portfolio with an acquisition last year we brought on products that now cover the entire uh, spectrum all the way down to UHF for filter applications where in the past we were really kind of limited below the S-band frequency range. And that, that's really been the biggest piece of the, the puzzle that's expanded on. We brought in our, uh, what I'll call traditional technologies, lumped element filters, waveguide, you know, different types of cavity filter technologies, and then ceramic coaxial resonator filters. And that really puts us in a, in a position to take for the next year and a half to two years, adjust our roadmap so that we're expanding on new technology development where we're able to integrate those components with our traditional microstrip filter products that we're seeing a huge uh, interest in the industry leveraging to shrink the size of their overall products to expand on cost down, but manufacturing increases in volume and reliability. Okay, but so you would add products both through acquisition and organically developed in-house? Absolutely, for the last 15 years, we've been doing a lot of organic uh, R&D type work. We continue to expand on the MicroStrip filter product, we bring out power dividers, we've just recently release quadrature hybrid couplers that can handle up to 50 watts in C-band, X-band, and K-band frequencies. And we'll continue to do that kind of work. But take, for example, switch filter banks. We are kind of limited in our technology as it goes lower in frequency without the acquisition of an integrated microwave corporation, which handled those more traditional technologies. In addition to that, lumped element filters or the, the ceramic quax resonator filters really do have a perfect fit in the spectrum of where their application is a better suit. So bringing them online gives us the ability to continue to expand and provide our customers with more full suite of application fit. Okay, I mean, this exhibition is testament to the uh, to the to the growth in RF microwave and the interest. So, how are you seeing the market, and which market segments are particularly growing? Well, that, that's a that's a pretty uh, diverse question, right? And it really depends on the portion of the industry. But just take the FCC spectrum bands and the what I'll call reallocation or reuse of these higher frequency bands that hasn't been seen over the last 15, 20 years. You're continuing to see whether it's 5G or Wi-Fi 6 creeping up in frequency, and it's interfering with the traditional players, whether it's the military customers or, or other locations, just like the, the uh, radio altimeters in the U.S. related to the, uh, the airline industry. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, you, you know, with that congestion, whatever the case may be, there's a need for more filtering, new filtering requirements, and not just your traditional spectrum bands of filtering, but whatever that system needs. You know, you're seeing the industry move more digital, more direct synthesis or direct uh, uh, digital upconvert, and that's changing the filtering requirements. Everybody has something that's a little custom, and the ability to be agile, right, that's that special word that people like to utilize, is all about how fast can you do it, and at how low a cost can you implement that kind of a solution. And the MicroStrip filter technology offers our customers a great ability to do that, whether it's our catalog products, or whether it's a semi-custom or fully custom design, we can do that very quickly, we can do a lot of different design iterations of that for our customers, whether it's a single filter for maybe a 5G application yeah. or 20 filters for a test equipment or a EW spectrum application. Okay, and you, you have a team of engineers that support customers to do that, or do the customers come up with what they want and you pursue that? So th that's, that's another great question. We have both. We actually um, are quite happy to work with customers in a build to print application where they do the design work, whether on our materials or whether on their own materials. But also, we have uh, well over 15 engineers in three different locations in two different continents that are doing design work for our customers. Everything's ER99, which is a big subject that we see in Europe and some of the other places in our location. But they're able to suit our customers, work directly engineer to engineer to give the customer that exact uh, frequency application they're looking for. Okay, I think military defense is also a market that's growing. Can you just comment on that? Right, so I mean, you know, it, it, we're all aware of what's going on up in Ukraine and, and Russia. 
And it's, it's really done an given an opportunity to showcase some of the technology that's being developed over the last 15 years, especially in electronic warfare. And you know, whether it's putting product inside of drones, whatever they're doing in, in uh, uh, missile applications, or just the electronic warfare that's being used to protect the troops. We're seeing a, a, an increased demand in that technology. And maybe in Europe, as they continue to allocate additional funds, which everybody's talking about that expanding significantly from what has happened over the last five or 10 years, I think we're going to see a, a huge increase in the amount of need in that application. And every theater has different requirements, different spectrum needs, and you're going to need that application to be able to be versatile so that you can fit the new filters inside of there. People are looking to move towards more surface mount away from chip and wire hybrid applications. So you need a packaged product in many cases. A lot of our filters, there's no packaging necessary. It, the filter is the package. So it's capable of handling that surface mount technology up to 50 gigahertz in frequency. Okay. And are there any new products that have come through from Knowles over the past six months, a year that you like to comment on? Right, so what we've done in the last year is really look at how much power can our filters truly handle, especially on the microstrip filters. People traditionally think of microstrip filters as receive only, small signal applications. And compared to some of the other applications out there, you know, a waveguide filter, that's not wrong. But when you start to look at it, we have plenty of filter capabilities and technology that can handle 20 watts, even 50 watt CW for radar applications as the customers start to change the way their implementation and their block diagram is set up. You know, S-band, C-band frequencies, obviously very hot topic around ground-based radar, and we're supporting customers in that application where they need the parts to be able to handle maybe not even 50 watts CW, but but maybe a pulse application. The thin film microstrip filter technology can handle that. It's smaller, it's lighter weight, but it also is not a discrete com or built out of a bunch of discrete components. It's a distributed element device that no longer has all these tiny little solder joints of capacitors, nothing to worry about when it comes to yeah. detuning on an inductor, et cetera. You know, so that's an area. In addition to that, we've just recently, uh, at IMS a couple months ago, yeah. released our quadrature hybrid couplers. So the focus there was to meet a need in the market that wasn't available today. People have been integrating lane couplers for many years in chip and wire hybrid applications. But finding a suitable solution in a solder surface mount application that can handle reflow was very difficult. And unless you were at lower frequencies, it just wasn't available on the market. So now we have a solder surface mountable application that covers C-band up to K-band in frequency from anywhere from six to as wide as six to 20 gigahertz in frequency that our customers now can use for those applications. Okay, and you're seeing customers take up those products for their applications. Right. So the, the, the majority of the reason why you would want to use a quadrature hybrid is for a broader band application. And so that's going to be more of your defense customers. So we're sampling those today, but as we all know, the defense teams take their time yeah. expanding and integrating that into production. But on a commercial, there's, are there commercial applications as well, which have a shorter time frame? So commercial applications in this industry continue to grow, We're, but it's a little bit different application. We tend to see commercial applications either in 5G millimeter wave for our product offering, and although that hasn't done the ramp that everybody talked about four years ago, we are starting to see signs of life where it is starting to pick back up. The United States is really starting to roll out in select areas. We're seeing a lot more activity in, in Asia and a little bit in Europe as well. Yeah. But also, uh, we're seeing it in test equipment. The test equipment uh, manufacturers out there are always looking for lower cost solutions. They're looking for very high rejection requirements and a lot of filters are necessary. So they have to come up with methods to lower the cost of the overall product. And a thin film filter, like the microstrip filters that we supply is a great solution. Okay, and now you're already seeing, you know, I've talked to some of the test and measurement guys here, and they're already looking at six G. Is that something you would work in tandem with to meet their requirements? So we're talking to people about 6G, but I think it's a little too soon and a little bit too much hype to believe that there's a whole lot going on there, personally. We are talking to a few customers, but it's pretty rare that anybody's discussing 90 to 110 gigahertz. But we do have a few customers that we're working with and supplying them product in a periodic basis. Okay, but 5G is more the focus at the moment. 5G is the focus. There's clearly a lot of spectrum that hasn't been touched yet, hasn't been implemented on. 
you know, we've just recently released a 47 gigahertz filter for that frequency range at FR2, but, you know, uh, I'm waiting to see the full implementation and rollout before I even think about the cost considerations of the W and higher frequencies. Okay. Tim Brunner from Knowles Precision Devices, thank you very much indeed.